being clear on number one, where is the business coming from? So if you're going to say you're going to be proactive, you've got to you've got to be clear on what you're being proactive towards. Um, otherwise, in a, in a in a form, you're basically waiting for it to come to you. All righty, welcome back to Are You Winning? This is Coach Craig Zuber. I'm here today with Nathan Lawrence. Nathan is the CEO and owner of the Lawrence Group with Carol Williams Realty out of Panama City Beach, Florida. Nathan, holy smokes, man. In the last year, you did just under 400 transactions, right around $3 million in gross commission. Is that true, buddy? It is. It is. It is. How are yeah, you doing I'm, today? I'm doing great, man. Thanks for being here. Absolutely. Appreciate the opportunity. Thanks for taking time. Of course, of course. Is there anything you want to add in regards to uh, where you're located, who you are? Uh, Did I miss anything about your organization? No, I think you pretty much nailed it. Yeah, we're in Panama City Beach. Uh, We cover basically Panama City Beach, 30A, um, all the way over to Destin, Florida. So, Got it. So you centralized in uh, Panama City Beach, and then you go all the way up to Destin. Yep. Yes, sir. All right. Love it. All right, Nathan. So let's just jump right in, man. Tell us what you're actually winning at right now yeah no it's a great question we um we we, we're a team of agents who are very uh proactive um you know we don't believe that where the market is determines um how our market is for us specifically uh you know i never never want to put the fate of you know the economy or the markets um uh, in, in, in our success as far as what we're able to accomplish. Um, so I'd say, you know, to answer your question, I think number one, lead gen, lead generation, uh, and, and more specifically, probably being proactive on, uh, going out and finding the business versus it coming to us, like maybe it has in the past. Okay. So let's just get clear real quick. So number one is being proactive. So walk us through what that means. And then also tell us about, so generating business. So you're saying that you guys are focused more on hunting and going out and getting the business versus the business coming to you? For sure. Absolutely. Is that the same with the proactive approach or is, did I miss anything with that? No, no, I think you nailed it. Yeah. And, you know, it's, we've been in a market over the last 12 to 18 to 24 months where uh, to a certain degree, uh, you know, we just had to show up and, and uh, you know, if you worked hard, you did ex- probably extremely well. Obviously, with the market shifting, um, it requires a different level of skills and, and probably a different level of uh, intentionality. Okay. So this proactive approach, how long have you been doing it? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, we've had the team here for seven years now. Um uh, you know, we've always been a, what I would say a pretty proactive team. Um, I think with the, the uh, market changing and uh, the market being what many expect it could be over the next six to 12 to 18 months, uh, I, I think we understand that it's time to saddle up and, uh, you know, get very clear on what our, our goals are and, uh and decide what we've got to do to achieve those goals, regardless of what it takes. Okay. So right now you're winning at generating business, going after business, hunting, not waiting for it to come to you. So now walk us through that. What exactly are you guys doing in order to accomplish that? Well, I think number one, just uh, being clear on number one, where is the business coming from? So if you're going to say you're going to be proactive, you've got to, you've got to be clear on what you're being proactive towards. Um, otherwise in a, in a, in a form, you're basically waiting for it to come to you. Um, so we just got very clear on what it was, you know, what we were going to be proactive about, um, which for us is, uh, seller leads, um, home valuation leads, um, internet leads in general. Um, those are probably two of the main ones and then circle prospecting. Um, you know, I, I've, in years past, I've never really been one to do much circle prospecting. And I had this aha one day of um, it's literally unlimited to a certain extent. Um, if you want to be proactive and, and, and work for an hour at having conversations, 
there's literally nothing stopping you from, from sitting down and jumping on the phone for an hour. If you want to do it for two hours, there's literally nothing stopping you. Um, whereas a lot of other lead sources, such as home valuation leads, um, internet leads in general, to a certain extent, you've got a way for them to come to you. I mean, you can still be intentional on having a plan in place and going after them with text, emails, and calls. Um, but at the end of the day, you're paying money and you're waiting for those leads to be generated to come to you. Whereas circle prospecting, you can just decide, hey, today I'm going to put in, I'm going to invest two hours of my day today into my business to make calls and set appointments and there's nothing stopping you. Okay, so first step is you get really intentional with seller leads, right? We're going to go after, yep. we're going to go after and be intentional about creating more increase for sellers. Now, two right. of those things is, so I would say, okay, number one, be intentional. Number two, then you looked at two things. One was marketing based, which is the internet leads. That is marketing based, still yep. focused on sellers to create those home valuation inquiries so that you can then you can check in on them and see what they're looking to accomplish. Right. Right. So yep. One, be intentional. Two, now we're looking at the marketing based piece. But then three, the proactive approach, which is I'm going to call, we're going to reach out, we're going to call people in neighborhoods. Yep. Because it's unlimited. So we're going to take that proactive approach and we're going to dial for an hour or two a day. Okay. So what does that actually sound like? What are, what are you saying? Yeah. So I think number one, there's a few, few different ways you can circle prospects. Um, it could be literally just a, you know, random neighborhood looking for sellers. It could be, you're doing it up at house. Um, it could be uh, maybe you just listed one or you put one under contract and, or you sold it. So I think there's a few different angles you can go after circle prospecting for us right now. It's very specific to, um, again, looking for sellers. And it's just the easy script of, uh, hey, Craig. Hey, Craig, this is Nathan. I'm with a real estate team here in Panama City. Listen, just wanted to reach out to you about your home at 123 Main Street. Curious if you've thought about selling it or would consider it in the near future. That simple. It's, it's, it's a very to the point uh, uh, intro. And you're going to get one of three answers. Yes, no, or maybe. Okay, great. So yep. what happens if you get a yes? What happens if you get a maybe? And what happens if you get a no? Yep. So again, we've got the scripts written out to where if it's yes, you say this. If it's if it's a maybe, you say this. If it's a no, you say this. For a yes, it's, um, you know, depending on the agent's uh, skill level and, and, and length of doing this, um, it might just be as simple as, hey, that's exciting, man. Craig, tell me a little bit about your situation. What's got you possibly thinking about selling? Got it. Okay. So focusing on them and what they're looking to accomplish. Yep. What's at the end of the day, it's um, there's a why behind why they're doing it, a reason, a why behind the reason for them doing it. You know, there's a situation, there's a story. And the sooner we can zero in on that, uh, number one, you're building trust and rapport. Uh, and number two, you're determining where this conversation needs to go um, based on that. Okay, so if we back up a little bit, it sounds to me like in order for Circle Prospect, the first thing that you're looking at is the why behind the call, whether it's because you sold the house in that neighborhood, because you have buyers that want to be in that neighborhood, because you're about to do an open house in that neighborhood. So the key ingredient is what's the purpose behind the call? What's the value that you're going to create by, by reaching out? What, what's that purpose or what's that Absolutely. why? Absolutely. Yep. So and, and the reason for that is your message may be slightly different. Um, and how you provide value uh, and a system might be slightly different as well. So yeah, yeah. You, you need to know, uh, you know, it's this, it's this idea of, um, you know, sometimes doing more isn't always better, right? So zeroing in and focusing on exactly what is the message you're trying to convey? Who exactly is it that I'm looking for? Um, and so in this case, if it's a seller, I want to be very clear on what my conversation and script script is with that person. That's great. So is it is there times where that for an agent in your organization that they prefer 
uh, if they're going to circle prospect, they prefer a different, like one story over the other. Like, Hey, I'm really, for some reason, my confidence shows up when I'm reaching out about an open house or my confidence shows up when uh, we have a buyer to be in that neighborhood. hundred percent. And so the first thing that comes to mind is we've got an ISA that for whatever reason, I, I get it. And we can talk about it for a second they would rather do circle prospecting around an open house. And so the reason is they almost feel like they have a reason for calling. They have something of value to inform that particular homeowner about. Um, so for them, it, it just gives them a little bit greater sense of confidence than the random, have you thought about selling it or would you consider it? Right. And, and no so right or wrong. For the public, the ISA means inside sales associate, where they're 100% focused on yep. uh, creating solar appointments. Is that right? Correct. Yep. Love it. Okay. Anything else that you want to add in regards to, well, actually, no, let's go back. What's, what is circle prospecting? If I'm listening into this and I'd never heard of it before, what the heck is it? Yeah, no, great question. Um, in, a, in a nutshell, it is reaching out to somebody so to see how you can help them, to see if they're ready, willing, and able to possibly buy or sell real estate in the next X months. Um, I, I, I very much believe and understand the idea and concept that success is simply a numbers game. And so I know in 100 people, there are so X many people that are going to make a, a move in the next three to six months. There are X number of people who are going to buy a house in the next three to six months. I just have to call enough people to find the ones who are ready, willing, and able to do that. Absolutely. Well, we're going to simplify this even more, right? Like my, when I look at, when I hear circle prospecting, what I look at is, hey, we're looking at a, des, a, a designated spot for a specific reason, whether it's that neighborhood or I have a buyer that wants to be in that area or we have a open house that wants to be in that area. There's an area specific, and then we're going to draw a circle around that area, and we're going to reach out to those people in that circle and see if they're interested in yep. making a move. Yep. Right? Yep. You know, one thing statistically that, that's interesting about real estate is it's kind of tribe-related. You know, one person does something, and then all of a sudden somebody else wants to follow suit. So what I've learned over the years is, Statistically, within a hundred doors, if somebody lists their property, that within a hundred doors, two more people will follow suit within a six-month period of time. And if yeah. I know that as a real estate agent, then why don't I just pick up the phone and go find those two out of the hundred so I can get to them first? Hundred percent. I've even heard a stat, and, and how accurate it is, I'm not sure, but when a home sells. If you go six houses down to one to the right, six houses down to the left and across the street down 12, somebody is going to think about selling simply because they've seen the for sale sign in the yard. They've seen the sell sign removed. They've seen the new people moving in. So it naturally just it causes this thing in your head to click of what did they sell for? What does that mean we could get for our house? What would we do next? So it's 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 finding those people before they jump on the internet, before they have conversations with other agents, et cetera. Right. It's called your RAS, right? Your reticular activating system of once I see it, then I get curious. And now somebody yep. reaches out to me and For asks sure. me about making a move. Absolutely. Well, that's about as proactive as they come, man. So how well are you guys doing at it right now? Good. We, uh, I would say right now we're probably setting about two appointments a week from it. Um, it's fairly new. You know, like I mentioned, we haven't done it a lot in the past. Um, I, I, I saw it as a huge opportunity. And so we started making the move towards it and have recently just got things very systemized as far as what happens when they say this. What do we do? How do we put them on a market report if they're six months out? Uh, you know, basically cleaning up the process so we can become um, effective and more efficient in it. Uh, so, I, you know, right now we're at maybe two, two appointments a week. Uh, we have listings from it already. We have properties on a contract from it already. Uh, you know, so I would expect 
probably in the next 30 to 60 days, we double that uh, closer to four appointments a week. Two appointments a week for taking a proactive approach with the focus on creating more seller opportunities yep. in a market where other agents may say, hey, there's just not enough business out there, man. Like nothing's working. What would yeah, you that's say to just an excuse. That's there's 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 tons of business out there. It's just going out and getting it. Yeah, it sounds to me like you're finding an excuse to win. That's it. And so the other thing, you know, for agents who maybe are listening to this, the other thing you've got to understand about this is you go out and get those, you know, two, you go to those two appointments in a week and let's say you just get one of them, right? That's one for sell sign up now that should probably most likely generate you a buyer sale, right? And now you go and sell that house, you've got an opportunity to circle prospect that area again, telling everybody you just sold one, two, three Main Street. Um, and so now all of a sudden, yeah, it goes from one listing but it goes from a listing to selling to grabbing a buyer from that listing, selling them something to now the opportunity to get another listing in that area uh, from circle prospecting that you sold something. So it can snowball pretty quickly if you're intentional about it. Hey there, I'm Jeremy Herman, CEO and co-founder of Clarity Now. Listening to this podcast means that you're committed to your career and to growing your business. You're the reason why we created Clarity Now. You see, Clarity Now is the real estate software designed to transform real estate agents into business owners. Now, being a great real estate agent is an entirely different skill set than being a great business owner. That's where Clarity Now can help. Clarity Now is powerful because some of the industry's top real estate coaches built it. We know what insights as coaches, top performers need to grow their business. So do you have a business plan based on your net profit goals? Do you know how you're performing against your quarterly goals? Do you generate a PL each month? Do you have the best tools to help your team members hit their goals? Are you managing your company's pipeline and conversion reports? Do you have the data that you need at your fingertips to run a successful business? Clarity Now can solve all these problems. Visit us at www.claritynowre.com and schedule a personalized tour to learn more. Mention this ad and we'll throw in one month for free. Congratulations on your success and let's take your business to the next level together. All right, man. Toughest lesson that you've learned, lesson or lessons that you've learned over the last few months. Oh man, this is a lesson that I would say is has uh, been, been a lesson in the learning for probably the last 12 months. Um, and it's, it's maybe twofold, but you know, in our world, I've learned that you just can't help everybody. Um, now, and whether that's from a buyer seller viewpoint, uh, for me, it's more from an agent standpoint. Um, if I, you know, I'm, I'm very passionate about helping others succeed, uh, in their, in their real estate business. I don't get a ton of joy out of going out and selling a house, right? That's just not my why. It's not my passion. It doesn't really, um, make me tick. Uh, what pushes me is helping the agents build the business that they want to live the life that they want. Um, and so sometimes it's, we bring people into our world and I so desperately want them to succeed so they can, you know, pay off the debt they have or go on the family vacations or do this or be able to do that. And I think sometimes I want it more than they do. Uh, and that typically doesn't end, uh, you know, the way that it should uh, when when I as a leader want it more than they do. So the toughest lesson that you've learned so far this year, Nathan, is that uh, you can't motivate anyone? Yeah, you, you can't teach motivation. If I had to sum it up in a few words, you cannot teach motivation. Yeah. How long does it take for you to figure that out? Uh, if faster now than I, than I have in the past, um, you know, because somebody saying they're motivated and somebody acting like they're motivated are two different things. Uh, so, you know, in the past, because I'm just naturally a very driven, motivated person. So for that, I would assume everybody is, uh, and that's just not the case. Uh, so, you know, when somebody tells me they're motivated, just say, great, you know, that makes sense. We all should be motivated. 
Um, and I don't think that, oh, I want to make sure I clarify this. I think everybody can get motivated. It's about finding what motivates them. And so people get into real estate with this, I think, an idea of what it is. And then when they get in, it's not quite what they thought. And so now maybe they don't have a passion to do it the way they were hoping or the way they thought or the way they need to in order to succeed. And so, look, if you're not passionate about it or you don't have a, you know, a why on why you're doing it, sometimes it is difficult to get uh, motivated to do it. Right. So you can't want it more than they can or you can't want it more than they do. Uh, can't teach motivation. You can help people find it and uncover it. Correct. Absolutely. All right. Yep. Uh, but that doesn't mean that they're spending enough time being clear on, on what it actually will take or the sacrifice that it will take in order to be successful in this industry. Yeah, that's it. You know, everybody, if you really, if you ask enough questions and you ask the right questions, you can understand, uncover somebody's why. And so for that, they can usually get motivated to do it. Um, the question is how long if they're having to do an activity that they don't enjoy. And so it's, you know, I'll say it may be a little different. It's them getting motivated to do the activity that needs to be done to achieve the goal they want, right? Getting motivated to achieve a goal is easy. It's can you be mo motivated to do the activity that gets you the result of the goal? There's a lot of agents out there that absolutely, without a doubt, love servicing clients. They just miss the fact that you can't service them if you don't create them or find them first. Yep. Right. And so if I was to summarize the other thing that I heard you say, it's it's the fact of your actions speak so loudly that I'm having trouble understanding what you're saying. Yep. Yep. Yeah. It's it's the you look, I, I appreciate it when people tell me they're motivated. Uh, and I want those kind of people around me. And ultimately, it, it's what do your actions say? So. That's right. <clears throat> That's right. All right, Nathan, man, this has been awesome about taking the proactive approach to generating sellers in a market that has significantly changed. I appreciate everything that you've shared with us step by step. Let's yes, let's sir. transition just a little bit and learn learn some fun things about you. All right, let's let's look at the clarity five questions in regards to is there a TV show or a movie series that you're currently streaming? Oh uh, man, you're gonna think I'm crazy. And it's interesting. I don't think aside from people on my team, a lot of people don't even realize this. I literally do not have a TV. Uh, I have not had a TV for probably coming on 18 months. Um, simply because I'm the type of person that can easily get pulled in to something. Uh, and so I'm just, these last 12, 18 months, I'm just trying to really be intentional with my time and where I spend uh, my energy and focus. So that was just a decision I made to, to, to do. And, you know, I, I think it's, I'm still alive and I'm, I don't, I don't, I don't think at the end of the day, I'm probably really missing much. So. <laughs> All right. Well, it, nothing about a streaming show. Okay. So what about a book? Any book specifically that's made the biggest impact on your career? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, uh, I was just talking to somebody last week. I gave them a copy of the one thing and I said, this by far has been the most, uh, business transformation for me of any book I've ever read. Um, just the idea of, of the one thing, and gosh, if you haven't read it, if you're listening to this and you have not read it, I'm telling you, it'll, it'll change your world, whether that's from a business viewpoint or a personal viewpoint. Um, I think nowadays, just the way the world is and the way we are, you know, uh, with everything happening, things moving so quickly, um, we we very often forget to slow down and sometimes focus on less. And I think when you do that, I think number one, you you really get a sense of what is most important. Um, and then number two, you know, how do you become the best at that 
versus trying to be good at everything. Right. So, yeah, I mean, the, and, I, and I'm actually I just started reading it again last week. Um, you know, I've read it probably twice now. So just going back through it. And it's interesting, you know, where I was a year and a half, two years ago in my life and in, in my business. I read it and things jump out at you. Right. And you, and you go through the book and you highlight certain things. Now, a year and a half later, I go back and read it and I'm highlighting things that weren't highlighted the first time. Right. And I read things that were highlighted and I'm like, yeah, I don't, I don't really know what that meant to me back then because it's in my state of who I am now, it's not as relevant. So reading it the second time, um, definitely different things jump out at you for where you are in your life. Different man, different river. Right. That's Absolutely. Great. And uh, clarity comes from a process of elimination, not addition. Yeah. It seems like this focus on one thing is helping you That's get it. more and more clear. Love it. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. You, business, you have a business person or somebody, uh, mentor or whatever that you study? Yeah. I mean, I've, I've got uh, you know, two or three people in my life that I've had uh, the honor of talking to and learning from and, and having you know weekly or monthly conversations with. Uh, yeah, Gene Rivers is one of them. Um, I've known Gene for gosh, seven, eight years. Um, he's been an incredible uh, supply of knowledge and, um, you know, uh, just a person that's that's I've been able to count on. Anytime I've needed assistance, whether personal or business, um, yeah, just learned a lot from him. And uh, definitely, I, I'm not sure I would be where I am today. I certainly wouldn't be here at this point by now if I hadn't had the guidance and, um, you know, just abundance of knowledge that, that he's poured into me over the, the last several years. Um, you know, a big fan of obviously Ben Kenny. Um, those of you who are in the real estate world probably know the name Ben Kenny. Um, you know, I have a huge uh, respect for where he's come from, what he's done, and and what he's continuously doing uh, in the real estate industry, as well as just uh, you know helping the people around him become um, you know a, a better version of who they are with more opportunity. Okay. All right, Nathan, you, if you can go back to uh, when you're 20 years old, what advice would you give yourself? 20 years old, if I could go back and do anything over or give myself advice, what would I do? Uh, I, I'll tell you exactly what I'd do. What I just spoke about was the one thing. I, number one, I would have read that book uh, and I would have uh, I would have put it to work. I would have been real intentional on following the ideas and models in that book. Um, and that's probably why it impacted me so much is because I am this person that's, you know, is constantly, you know, my mind's always in overdrive. I'm thinking of different ways to do this. How do you do this? In the past, it was, I can make money doing this. I could, you know, I could, I could sell more real estate by talking to this person. Maybe I should go start this business. And man, when I was when I was in my early 20s, that was like in overdrive, right? I was thinking about just 20 different ways to, to become successful, 20 different ways to build wealth, 20 different ways to do this. Um, and it's it's again, it's if I could have honed in on and found a passion um and and gone all in on that at the age of 20, 21, I got my real estate license at 21. So I started fairly young. Um, I was just like a ping pong ball bouncing all over the place. Right. So if, if I could have just honed in um, on how to build a business and why it was important for me to do that and uh, how do I help people? Yeah, I'd, I'd be, there's just no telling where I'd be. All righty. <laughs> You could pick any other profession, Nathan, outside of real estate or real estate sales or investing. What would it be? Oh, uh, gosh. I'm going to give you two answers. Uh, I don't know if that's allowed, but I, I would I would either be an attorney 
or a, a veterinarian, believe it or not. So I, I worked at a, a, at a vet at the age of probably 15 or 16. Um, thought there for a few years I was going to go into that field and uh, just it did, you know, I just didn't. And uh, um, so, but, you know, I, I think it would have been cool. I'm a, I'm a big, uh, big animal lover, I guess you could say. So. All right. We'll leave it with that. Nathan Lawrence, the, uh, the veterinarian. I love it. It's got a nice ring to it. It sure does, man. All <laughs> right. All right, Nathan. I, again, I want to thank you. Yes, for- sir guests and joining us today and a special thank you to our sponsor clarity now be sure to subscribe to our podcast to get in the trenches with top real estate business owners who are winning and willing to share their lessons this has been great nathan thanks so much man appreciate it appreciate it have a good one